I spent the last two days frying all of this chicken so that I could make this. A big part of my job is developing recipes that thousands of you will make at home. Today, I'm gonna to show you how I developed my crispiest chicken sandwich. I wanna start with the thing you would normally do first in the recipe. I'm gonna take bone-in skin on chicken thigh and remove the bone, but keep the skin on. I wanna explore whether keeping the skin on or removing it has implications for the final texture. Chicken thighs, as opposed to boneless, skinless chicken breast, there's a lot more fat in it. There's a lot more richness. It's kind of a logical sort of starting point. You know, already I'm kind of sitting here asking myself, well, do people want to remove the bone but leave the skin on? That's something you have to do yourself. You can't really go into a store yet. Million dollar idea, who's coming with me? Come on, baby. Boneless skin on chicken thighs? just right there in like the package, ready to go. Just saying, I'm gonna start with some pre-treatments, right? So this is what we're doing to the chicken before it gets fried. And there's two main elements to that. Is there some kind of dry seasoning? Is there marinade, some kind of liquid pre-seasoning? These are ingredients that are like fairly typical in terms of dry rubs and seasonings in general. The third option is really just gonna be a control, which is salt and pepper. If salt and pepper can get you 85% of the way there, maybe it's worth considering. While the chicken is just hanging out, in the meantime, what I'm trying to accomplish with this sandwich is a few different things. One, it's all about texture. I wanna make the absolute crispiest chicken sandwich. Next, it's really important to me that this is a recipe that can be executed in its totality in a couple of hours max. Third thing, I want this to have great flavor that feels somewhat familiar, but offers a little bit of a twist and maybe something a bit unexpected. Already, another decision has to be made. I need some sort of dredge, some way of putting a coating on the chicken that's gonna start to build some texture in. But I'm gonna use a quarter cup of cornstarch. Starches make things crispy. They also help with like adhesion. A quarter cup of rice flour. Rice flour gets like very crispy, but it doesn't necessarily take on a lot of color. You can't ignore what the chicken's gonna look like and how we're gonna sell this visually. AP flour gives you great color and nutty depth of flavor. I have a feeling that whatever I ultimately use, it's gonna be a combination or one or another of these things. I'm gonna take the fry temperature, just a very average place and just do 350. So that's the dry rub. This is our wet marinade and this is salt and pepper. I'm looking for golden brown color. I'm looking for crispiness. The chicken is crisp, but it doesn't feel anything like a batter. I'll say that. So this is our dry rub. It's just so savory. I think a little bit of sweetness in there it would just balance a little bit of the heat of the chili flake. All right, so now we have our wet marinade here. I'm not liking this nearly as much as I thought I would. There's a certain thing that happens when soy sauce gets cooked out like really hard. The flavor just gets very closed down. It almost doesn't taste like soy sauce anymore. Maybe it's like the soy needs to come out. Like maybe like, and what's the sesame oil doing in there? I think we got to move away from it. All right, let's taste salt and pepper before we get too far ahead of ourselves here. Like even salt and pepper plus that dry dredge already has added up to something that feels relatively dynamic. I think I'm officially moving on from the wet marinade. It's starting to introduce some complexity here that's not really needed at this juncture. And flavor-wise, the dry treatment was a good bit better. Okay, so now I'm gonna try two different versions of our dry rub. So the first is garlic and onion powders, gochugaru, salt, pepper, light brown sugar. The gochugaru is taking the place of the Aleppo style pepper, a little less spicy, a little more inherent sweetness, so really nicely balanced. I can use more of it without making this overwhelmingly spicy. The second is gonna be all of those things, plus freshly grated garlic and ginger. Again, I'm just gonna do a nugget in each. This one is sort of like, well, what have I done? It's like, it's kind of a paste. It doesn't really want to adhere. Like it's kind of bullshit, but maybe bullshit in a good way. I'm using the same mix of starches and flour that I used before. That's our pasty guy. Here is the dry, dry rub. This is the dry rub without the fresh garlic and ginger. Really nicely balanced. I think the sweetness is very much welcome here. It's really nice integrated flavors here. 
All right, so this is the version that has the fresh garlic and ginger. They're incrementally better, but is it worth it? I don't think so. As much as it pains me to rely on a dry rub when it's like something we've done a lot here in the test kitchen, it's having an appreciable benefit in very little time. And that's getting us to that end point of making this a recipe that's doable in a couple of hours. Let's assume that we're working with some version of this or similar dry brine and let's move on to batter. These are gonna be two versions of wet batters. These both have cornstarch, but this is rice flour and this is AP flour. I'm putting baking powder in each one. Seltzer in batters makes things really light and very crisp. The bubbling action of the carbonation helps open up the structure of the batter and create like a really nice open lacy network. So here is rice flour and here is wheat flour. I mean, right off the bat, I don't love what's happening visually with either one. Like this laciness is pretty fun on the wheat flour one, but neither one feels like it got like quite as like deep golden brown as I'm looking for. Also the gochugaru, it's like forming these brown specks in there that I think are just a little bit visually unappealing. Rice flour plus cornstarch is giving it a nice crunch, but it's, it's subtle. Not nearly as like pronounced as I would like. And this is the version with wheat flour. The flavor is a little bit anemic. Really need to punch up the seasoning a little bit more. I think the gochugaru here might be a mistake. I'm also just not getting the level of crispiness that I really want here. What I'd like to do is take the rice and cornstarch mixture, the wheat flour and cornstarch mixture, and try a different liquid. Vodka is an interesting choice because it will add fluidity without adding actual water content. It evaporates very quickly when cooked and it doesn't activate gluten. I want to see if the vodka can aid me in the quest for crispiness. So you can see two very different consistencies. The rice flour mixture very tight and then the wheat flour mixture just a little bit looser. All right, so that's the rice flour. So like there's a lightness and there's a crispiness here with the rice flour version that I think is pretty compelling, but flavor wise, it's wanting. I'm gonna try the wheat flour version. The wheat flour version is kind of insane. It's so light and crisp. The texture of the batter is such that it feels like it's like been aerated. It hasn't held on to very much grease at all. It's just a little bit more flavor going on there as well. I find that really interesting. I think the vodka is definitely having a major effect, you know, like look at where we were. It's kind of like tempura like shell, whereas this feels like it's somewhere in between like tempura and sort of Southern style fried chicken to me. The way that it's like really held on to that wheat flour and created these crags. I would like to go again on vodka and wheat. I wanna see if I can make it a touch thicker. So I'm gonna remake the dry rub. But instead of gochugaru, I'm gonna use just regular paprika. Just gonna add a little bit of color and a little bit of fruitiness. One thing that will help batter it here is if you pre-coat your meat in starch or flour of some kind. And I think cornstarch makes the most sense just because it has a great ability to get things to adhere. Definitely a thicker batter. Is it too thick? I don't know. We lost the sort of shagginess there. I just feel like the thicker batter is taking longer to get crispy and to brown. And that sucks. That's not where we want to be. So as I feared, you know, the skin did not get crispy under that thicker shell. That cornstarch on the chicken as well, I gotta say like it just forms like a little bit of like a gummy coating. Suddenly like everything about this feels wrong. It kind of reminds me of like a fried Mars bar. Oh Jesus. It's a little bit fish and chips batter. Yeah. If you want a crust that can hold any glaze or sauce, maybe you want a little more dry component kind of like packed in. But the chicken, I must, it's very juicy and it's seasoned very well. How are you envisioning this fried chicken sandwich visually? Part of me wants it to feel textural enough that you could soak it in a very tight glaze like you do sometimes with like a Korean fried chicken. You just have to be careful that it won't take away the whatever crust, 
crisp and crust that you're working so yeah. hard to achieve. So it might literally be like a brush on top right. rather than like a, a soak it. or a dip. You know, listen, I'm not where I want to be and like, and that's okay. For the next version, I want to stick with a lighter batter. I'm going with a higher proportion of AP flour. Go up to a third of a cup water plus a half cup vodka. And one of these is going to have cornstarch, other no cornstarch. I love how we have a coating that's following the natural shape of the chicken. We made relatively minimal differences here, but we went from this to this. That's a huge difference. Visually, I think we're in a much better place. The version without the cornstarch seems to absorb a little bit more of the oil underneath, be a little bit greasier. The flavor is good. I mean, it's very nicely seasoned almost right on the edge of being over seasoned. The batter is very light and crisp. I mean, it really is so crispy, but it's a different expression of crispiness than I fear than like what most people are gonna want when they hear the crispiest chicken. Let's see how the version with cornstarch did. It's very, very good. I'm loving the coating. I'm loving the ratio of sort of the exterior total amount of batter to chicken got just enough of everything to kind of do one more pass here. I want to just get a full piece of chicken in so that we can at least experiment with like a couple of quick finishers tonight. I'm taking the skin off of this because I just have a feeling like honestly, like calling for boneless skinless, you can buy this. It's ready to go. I'm curious to see what the difference is, frankly, without it. I want just like a little finisher for the chicken. See if I can make a glaze that can be brushed over. Kenji in his recipe sort of laid out two sort of possible versions that were really compelling. One is sort of like a finishing glaze that's more sweet and spicy, like it's gochujang based. Another was more of like a sweeter version with soy sauce. I really wanna see if we can kind of bring this to a very full on spicy, deep place flavor wise. Gonna do cornstarch treatment. So the glaze, I wanna pull it down till it's it's pretty tight. So a very small amount will really coat the chicken and deliver like a huge flavor upgrade. Really loving the shagginess of this batter. What's interesting to me is just like its texture on fried chicken that's just presenting in a really new way. The increased proportion of AP flour increased proportion of vodka had a real benefit. I want to set one of these up as a sandwich just to see where we get with that. I'm liking the cross section here. The flavors are great. You know, the gochujang just really brings so much intensity. That glaze is working really hard for me. The crunch isn't so pronounced, which is good and bad. Hi. Hi. Look at this guy. It is recalling a Nashville hot chicken vibe. There's a lot going on. Yeah. But very flavorful. Definite improvement on the crust from the previous version. I would say it's currently in this state, it's a juicy glazy fried chicken sandwich. Okay. Positives of the sandwich are that first of all, really great flavor. Two, it's fast. You can go from, you know, pulling raw chicken out of the fridge to eating the sandwich in under an hour. That's really, really different from most other fried chicken preparations, full stop. Overall, really good first day, a little bit more to go. I woke up early and I was tossing and turning and I was just thinking about the fact that it feels like, even though it's not a lot of effort, creating this batter that is getting us to this wonderful shaggy craggy place is that creating the best possible chicken experience for the application of a sandwich. I ha suddenly had the thought like, what if instead of making a batter, if we were to consider a dry dredge for our final step pre-fry, what if the vodka was the wash? What would that mean? That's kind of what I want to explore. New day, new me, same chicken, let's go. The dry rub is gonna remain unchanged, a seasoned dry dredge today rather than a batter, but with the caveat that I'm using vodka as the wash. Instead of cornstarch, I'm gonna try potato starch. My hope is that the potato starch will get 
even crispier than the cornstarch did. Double down on my seasonings, and then I'm gonna do sesame seeds. Sesame seeds are gonna bring crunch as well as flavor. I'm making the gochujang glaze mostly the same as yesterday. I'm also gonna add some toasted sesame oil just to double down on some sesame flavor. Today I'm going back to a skin-on boneless version just to see if I can get that skin really crisp within the dry coating. So we're gonna do that technique of pressing the chicken into the starch before it goes into the vodka wash. Feels a little crazy. Does it seem crazy? Because it feels a little crazy on this side. This is fun. I think the vodka wash might have just taken that potato starch right off, but I don't know. Maybe maybe we had some clingage. So here is our chicken we just fried. It's not quite as like crunchy crispy as I was expecting slash hoping it to be, but there's a delicateness to the crispiness and there's a really great sensation of having these kind of craggy bits adhering to the chicken. I'm barely getting the sesame seeds. I'm certainly not mad that they're there. And I think, you know, that plus the toasted sesame and the glaze is going to be pretty interesting. So I'm going to do two pieces this time, mainly just because I want to see if a bigger piece is able to just fry longer and get crispier still. I'm not going to do the potato starch pre-coating before doing the wash this time. I don't think it's staying on in enough quantity to make it worthwhile. Oh yeah, punching up the seasoning really made a difference. I kind of dig the fact that it's like a little bit KFC, but with something else going on. So the bigger one went an extra minute and it's holding up nicely, but we lost some adhesion chicken to dredge there. The chicken wants to kind of shrink, bind up. I mean, flavor is great. The glaze is like bright, it's sweet, it's hot but it invites another bite. It's just really warm, lovely balance. Glaze is good to go. I just wanna push the texture of the chicken a little bit further. So this time we're gonna do thigh and breast. So I'm gonna do an egg. It could be part of what really helps bind chicken and dredge. Ultimately, it's the dredge that's getting crispy, right? So the more you can get on there, the crispier the sensation you're gonna get. I'm also just really curious about what happens when alcohol and egg comes into contact with each other. Is it gonna like cook it over time or is it gonna be all right? I don't know. I have boneless skinless chicken breast. So I got inspired by this technique that I saw um, from David Shim where he takes a short rib and he scores it very deeply as a way of increasing the surface area to absorb a marinade. And it got me thinking about how could you take a, a chicken breast and kind of do the same thing, kind of open it up so that you get more surface area to get better coating of your dry rub. So I'm gonna season both of these. So the egg's gonna wanna bind to the starch and then the flour's gonna wanna bind to the egg. And away we shall go. Definitely got good crisp on both. The egg is grabbing incrementally more of both the potato starch that is on the chicken itself and on the dredge, which is ultimately on top of it. For all the things happening here, the drama of all the interventions we did to kind of get to this point, I don't think are being validated by a superior chicken experience. I'm primed to prefer the boneless, skinless chicken thigh just because I think it is by far the easiest option. This is the crispiness I want in a piece of chicken, especially if it's going into a sandwich and gonna get coated with a sauce. This is our one boneless, skinless chicken thigh. Good adhesion, great flavor, and just a little bit more bite to that dredge. It's fried chicken as you know it, but with a twist. I'm feeling really positive about this direction. Compared to yesterday, this is more foolproof, and frankly, it's cooked up crispier and it's more delicious. So here we are. I really appreciate how seasoned this chicken is. Just like it's very delicious on its own. I feel like the gochujang glaze, it's a little, I don't know that I want toasted sesame no, oil. It's too much? kind of bringing down the flavor where it's like bright and spicy. I want a little sweetness. I am wondering like how to sort of finish things off. It can be as simple as a punched up mayo swipe, or maybe it's like a yogurt zhuzh. I don't know. Yeah, I'm still thinking through that one. Yeah. Now that I feel pretty good about the chicken treatment and about the glaze, I'm gonna get the chicken set up in the dry rub. 
and let it sit for about 20 minutes just so it can absorb a little bit more flavor. Same dredge as last time. I'm using proportionately less vodka just as a way to thin the egg out so it doesn't form a puffy bready coating. Glaze, I am gonna try taking out the toasted sesame oil. Hannah really didn't seem to be a big fan of it. While that's resting, I'm gonna work on my other condiment. And I'm thinking I want ultimate simplicity here. What if it's as simple as mixing some mayonnaise with the bread and butter pickle brine? So it's sweet, little tangy, but not thinning it out to the point that it's gonna wanna get super runny. But it's just not quite giving me the sharpness that I want. Because I've already used rice vinegar once in the recipe, I'm gonna try that next. I also think some of the dill in there could be really fun. I like that. Just punchy enough, but it's creamy, feel good. First, we're going into the potato starch, do the egg wash, dredge. I've been taking a quiet gauge on the timing of the frying process, and we're kind of netting out around six minutes. I mean, right off the bat, there is color, there is crunch. I'm loving the sesame seeds on there. Yet again, I, you know, I just feel very gratified by the fact that we chose a simpler approach that also managed to feel better for the application we were putting this food through. Done. Overall look screams fried chicken sandwich. Something crispy, something saucy, something crunchy, and it's on two pieces of bread. All right, Hannah. It looks beautiful. I would pay money for this, I think. <laughs> <laughs> the flavor is very good. The chicken is so juicy. I'm so happy with that. Is it just mayo? Is it flavored with it's anything? It's mayo with a little bit dill? of the rice vin and dill. Oh my God, I'm like, what is that? I thought it was just extra fragrant pickles. Fine, the dill is really coming through. The bite overall feels very balanced in terms of fresh elements, cooling elements, a little bit of heat, but not really that much. And I think whoever is looking for a fried chicken sandwich, whether it's something closer to like a classic style or something more adventurous, like they will be happy with this. Mm. I really like this. And honestly, the fact that we were able to do this in an hour, I'm really like, I'm just in such a different place than I was yesterday. I feel like we ended up in a great spot. It's very rarely a waste of time to go through the exercise of trying multiple versions of something. That just adds to your bank of knowledge of how certain ingredients and techniques are gonna interact and pay off in one way or the other. And that's like the real value. It's being able to say, hey, I tried all these different versions and this one really represents like the best possible payoff. You can find the recipe in the description below. I hope you make it. Let me know how it goes. Do you know about my other million dollar idea? No. Pasta that's got the ridges on the inside and out. That's good. Yeah. Rigatissimo. We could go somewhere with this.